inspired by sound. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Inspired by Sound video. Today, we're going to be discussing key switches, hidden content, mod wheels, oh my. Do you know how cool key switches actually are? And do you know that a lot of the software instruments that you probably run probably have key switches? If you're new to software instruments, you might not even know this, but something even as simple as Logic's own sounds has a lot of hidden key switches. Today, we'll be discussing Project Sam Lumina and its key switches and its mod wheel. And also a couple of my favorite patches, like this one. What's the name of this preset? Texter Fantasy Long Gracious. It's very nice, and that's just one key. It does all sorts of other stuff. Let's change key. We were in A, now we're in G. This is a fantastic library full of all sorts of interesting uh, textures and soundscapes and really, really neat sounds. And uh, of course, not every sound is key switched or has key switches, but for the ones that do, um, I wanted to show you a couple of my favorites and show you that there's hidden stuff in a lot of these things that you might not even know about. Now, if you have light guide and you have some sight, unlike myself, you might see down at the end of the keyboard down here, there's stuff that shows up. But for us and for my, you know, for myself and other blind people, it's just a road of discovery or RTFM, which I tend not to do. I tend to get a library and delve straight in. So discovering key switches uh, is more fun when you don't read the manual. So let's talk about how they work and how we can use them. Okay, I didn't have to go down that far at all. In this case, they're the first octave. So let's take that same sound we started with the A key. There was actually an octave lower, here we are. So the bottom C are on this 61 key controller and we're set to the normal octave. Was it? Okay, apparently not. Minus one, there we go, now it's off. I was right, so it's octave minus one. So the first C takes away all the sound entirely. So in this case, the first key switch that we're using, or when you load the sound from scratch, is this bottom C. And it's, it's a latch key switch, so you don't have to hold it down. Um, there are momentary key switches which you hold down and will affect the sound perhaps immediately, or for the next time you hit a key, and there are latched key switches which you play once. And um, oh, actually, there's almost three types. There's a radio button type as well, which this is not. This is a toggle. That's what this is. This is the key switch toggle. So by pressing bottom C on the keyboard and playing, there's no sound anywhere in the keyboard. If I press bottom C again, it comes back. Now, this library, uh, because it's the, the preset I'm using is actually called Sections, allows me to enable and disable parts of the sound. So let me press C and turn it all off. And then I press C sharp. And that's part of the same sound that we heard before, but not the whole thing. Look, I'll switch back to the C by pressing C sharp and then C. And you can hear it, they're embedded in the back. Let me press C and then D. That vocal is also hidden in the back. I'll do an A, B for each time. Now E flat. That one is more obvious. But what I find very interesting about this library is that they didn't just use the old sound that is found on the C and is hidden in the key switch. They re-recorded it. And you can tell this by listening to this E-flat version, which is faster than when I switch off the E-flat and hit C again. Let's put the E and the C, sorry, the E-flat and the C together, and you will hear them play at completely different speeds off of each other. So in this way, if you want to use a sound, but you don't want all of that sound, you can combine or use the elements that you want to use. And I think that's really interesting. So I don't always know where these things end and some of these go higher up the keyboard. Now, if you guys can see the lights, which I cannot, you would probably tell me that it stops at E flat, but sometimes things go further. So you just have to play around until you find it. 
And this is why I think key switches are incredibly interesting. Um, the rule, 90% of the time, I would say, I'll, I'll go as far as to say that, is that key switches are below the octave, but they don't have to be below the octave. In some cases, they're above the octave. Now, I don't think in any of this library that they are, but in one I was messing with yesterday from another company, they are indeed. And I plan to probably do a very short video on that later. So that's one sound. And that's, uh, well, part of one sound. Let me see. In some cases, hitting the key harder or softer, even though the velocity doesn't change because it's controlled with the mod wheel, will, will uh, sound differently. So let me have a look and see if octaves change how this sound is. In this case, no. There are no further key switches that I can find. But it is nice to discover what's on offer here. So like, that's a very complex sound. There's more in it than there were lower down the octave. Now you can't see my hand here. It's actually out of the camera's range because it's the top end of the keyboard. I'm switching off that C key switch. And here's the C-sharp version of that. It's more in focus, the D version. Vocals, E-flat. It's fantastic. I mean, just literally fantastic. And nothing on the E. So yeah, this, this uh, sound uses uh, four different key switches. Okay, C, C-sharp, D, and E-flat. So let's try moving to another. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Texture fantasy long mindfulness sections. Same kind of deal. We'll try again and see what kind of sounds we get from the different key switches. Just using the mod wheel to actually make the sound breathe, which is great. I'm using the A again, by the way. So that's that sound. Let's turn off the key switches. The first one is it's the same as before. So we'll try C sharp again. And it's silent in this case. How about D? There's a harp playing. And there's a clarinet that I'm pretty sure was not in the C. Am I mistaken? Or is the C sharp just really, really long to kick in? No, that's on the D. Just checking. E flat. Now that's interesting because I'm pretty sure that the D and the E are the same. Unless I'm mistaken. Oh no, there's D and E flat. Okay, so this one, see, this is this is like finding out as we go along and all these hidden things and the way that they work. I, I just literally find it very fascinating and I hope you do too. Um, it seems to me that there is only C and D in this case. Now, you light guide people are going, no, there's more, there's more, but you're just not hearing it. So uh, let's have another realm of discovery because I am actually quite curious to see if there's stuff that I'm missing because I'm not looking properly. That's C sharp, D. Okay. Maybe it is just C, C sharp and D in this case. Oh, okay. So look, that's that. There is no way apparently to play that. You hear this sound? This is A. There's no way to get just the strings from any of the key switches on this section. I'm not sure why or how, because nothing I do seems to turn them on. But when I go higher up the octave, here, where was I? Okay, C. Turn off that. Now the strings play on C sharp, but they didn't on the octave below. How interesting. Don't know why, but that's the way it is. Um, and I was, this library is 40 gigabytes. And you think, wow, what would cause a library to be so huge? But when you start delving into what happens with mod wheels, with key switches, and non-reuse of recorded content, you start to understand, really, just how amazing this stuff actually is. Um, in, in essence, and also, I, one thing I haven't mentioned are the different mic positions and mic mixes. This library has uh, the choice of direct mics, ambient mics and a wide mic and they all do different things so let me put the main key switch back on in this case and try and show you something else what have i got to turn off is it all off already that's off 
that's off that's off so we put the seat on right so let's turn down every mic that there is so i'm holding down a c and we'll turn up the direct mic are you going to play oh let me turn the morph key there we go there's a morph knob that goes between all the different mics and when i turn it it may load in and out of memory the required uh, thing so the direct mic is now in memory so that's the players all up close and personal let's turn that down oh i hear there we go the ambient mic i hit the same key again turn that down and the wide mic far far away and here's the wide mic By the way, videos like this, because they're in stereo, are best listened to, particularly on headphones or uh, sitting in the middle of your, your, the center of your stereo field, because you're going to miss a great deal of detail if you don't do this. But with this whole uh, three mic positions, you can start to see how these libraries accrue such a huge size between the key switches and the non-reuse -re of recordings, between the three different mic positions and between various velocities triggering differently, which uh, I'll show you some of later, and some of them don't use key switches, you can start to really see how these things get so big so quickly. And, you know, back in the day, 40 gigs for a library would be impossible because we just didn't have the hard drive space for it. One hard drive itself might be 20 megs. Yes, I said megs. I do come from a time when that was a thing, because I'm old and crusty and half senile at 35 years of age. But I remember a time when that was a thing. The biggest machine I remember seeing in 95, I think, was when my dad got a Windows 95 system and it had 850 megabytes of hard drive space. And I thought this was unbelievable. Not even a whole gigabyte. Hadn't heard of a gigabyte at that point. But, you know, I thought that was massive. But anyway, back to this. The being able to mix and match your mic sound as you want. So if we want lots of direct, we can have it. But it's quite dry. So how about mixing in a little of the wide as well? Or all of the wide? That's quite loud. Well, it's loud for what I'm achieving. So let's turn the direct down slightly. But no, there's too much wide. So let's turn the wide down a bit. Now it's a bit quiet. So let's turn up the ambient slightly. And see, we're mixing and matching again. It's not phasing because obviously it's recorded very well and all lined up at the end of the day, and it's just amazing. So these libraries really are something special and I think worth writing home about. And that's why I'm telling you about these. And this is why I do Inspired by Sound a lot of the time. So we've moved on to another preset. Texture, Fantasy, Long, Sirens sections. And let's see what key switches we can find in this one. Again, we're using A. It's just a nice, easy key to get to. Let's turn off the key switch for the low C. And let's enable the C sharp. Now that, as you can tell, is different than it was when the C was playing. Let's go back to the C for comparison. Oh, now this is a good one because this is where the mod wheel really comes into its own. They've cross-faded multiple recordings on the same key. So if you want to have a different sound of an expression, low mod wheel here. Now I'll release the key and play with the mod wheel at maximum this time. And these are why, again, these libraries get so big. Because this is not even key switched, this is mod wheel and crossfaded. So I can hold the key down and then move the mod wheel for a completely seamless transition between these recordings. Moving my finger up the mod wheel and back down. I mean, tell me that isn't unbelievable. Just that. And a lot of people, you'll get these libraries or you'll hear about them in, in TV and film and not know half of the work that goes into it. I still don't think I do. I bet there's hidden elements that I haven't even discovered yet. I only got this a few weeks ago, by the way, uh, two days before I went on the cruise. I think it was on April the 22nd or 1st or something. And it's uh, whatever day it is today. I can't even remember. May the something. May the 21st, I think. So I've maybe had this a month and I'm still discovering things that I didn't even know about. 
So let's play the C-sharp key switch and try the mod wheel at the same time. The strings come in on the left. And so this is a fantastic um, way for me to explain this actually, because if you notice bottom of the mod wheel, right hand string section, top of the mod wheel, snap, left hand string section. In the middle, both sides. That is a really good uh, choice for me to have found this. I'm glad I did. Just transitioning between the two elements. I mean, that fascinates me. That really does. Let's try D. Lowest mod wheel setting. That one stays the same. It just gets slightly louder when the mod wheel is at maximum and quieter when it's at minimum. And the E flat, do you do anything? This is the question, you see, because I don't know. I don't think this one does in this case. How about E? No, and so on. All right, so let's go back to the main C key switch. And we'll try another octave, because most of the time the way these works is that uh, each octave is the same kind of phrasing in just different keys. So if I show you what one full octave sounds like, C, I'll just go white keys. And they're not, they're not reusing recordings, by the way. So each key not only is mod wheeled, multiple mic'd, and multiple key switched, it's a different recording for each key in the octave. So there's no sample pitching or cheating going on. Now that was D above the C here. So now, after the C sharp, we have a completely different phrasing. Which is, to me, really quite phenomenal. This one doesn't change the mod wheel too much, but what do the key switches for this do? That's the C sharp key switch. Fantastic. And the D key switch, vocal. Crescendo-y type thing. E flat. Woodwinds and harps, as I understand it. There's an oboe in there and there's a harp in there for sure. And nothing on the E. So yeah, again, different phrasing across the different key switches. Um, sorry, across the different octaves and all sorts of things. Where on D, the octave above the previous D, and again, we'll look at these key switches and see what we can see. Nothing on the C sharp in this case. D, nothing, E flat. Lovely. And the E, nothing. So the strings and the woodwinds our flutes go together. Now, did you notice that phrase is shorter than the one on the E flat? So here's that phrase again. So it goes to the A. So we'll turn off that C and we'll play the E flat. To my reckoning, stops about there. But it continues until I release the key, in which case the last part is triggered and it plays the A. Let go, and the A will play. So it, it knows to go to the end of the phrase when I release my finger off of the key. Just phenomenal stuff. I mean, this programming that people put into these things, it's just mind blowing. And it's no wonder that uh, they are so expensive and yet so amazing. I don't know. And this is why, by the way, it's very, very easy to get lost in libraries like these because you can just spend your entire day discovering its secrets it's like a treasure chest of amazingness, and uh, it really can take you down a rabbit hole you did not expect to go down, and that's the joy of these things. So, I've done a lot of, of about this key switch, so let me go. Uh, you're going to hear the pre here now as I change sounds quickly. Where do I want to show you now? I think this one might be interesting. Okay, so now my keyboard is set to uh, the main octave. And this is called Orchestra Mitsukato 
uh, and runs, mid pizzicato and runs. And I think, yes, this is velocity controlled. So in this case, the mod wheel doesn't do anything, does it? Oh, it does, it just makes it loud. So I'll leave it on the top setting. So in this case, if I play a key very softly, it's the same sound. If I play it slightly harder, I'll try and get a different velocity. These are meant to be programmed, of course, a bit like the old Motif Mega Voices, if anybody remembers those. And then harder slightly more, you get the run. So, yeah, and they're all different round robins. It's not the same thing repeated time and time again. So that's one octave of these. Let's go down. Okay, so it starts at second octave C on your, on your 61 key when your octave is set to normal value. Let's go up. And it ends here on the G. So low C, so to there. So it's quite interesting, that one. Um, no key switches, doesn't need to be, but it is um, what it says it is, mid pizzicato and runs, and uh, lots of things playing together. I love stuff like that. Very cool, um, very good for incidental stuff. And that's... Let's try the mid trem and trills one. So low... low Velocity, harder velocity, and indeed you get the trills there. So there you go. Things like that can really help your productions because you can use them as intros or mids or breakdowns or whatever. And I think a lot of people that buy these orchestral things buy them for film and TV, which of course I love and making music for games and things. But there's nothing stopping you using these for trance or dance or other electronic music if you can find a way to fit it. And I think this is something that people often get wrong and go, oh, you can't use it like that. It's an orchestral library. It's wrong. The only wrong is in your head. The only wrong is in your head, in your mind. So, yeah. There was something else I wanted to show you, I think. Let's see if I can find it. I think the cartoon staccato might be an interesting one. I can't remember. Oh yeah, okay, so here's another one of these really cool instruments whereby soft velocity. Hard velocity. Lovely. So lowest, 